Josh Green here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Mr. Steve Robinson, just three weeks out from his matchup with Alan Babich. How are you doing, Steve? I'm good, Josh. You? Yeah, very, very well, mate. Good time to be a Toon fan, I'm sure, and a good time to be Steve Robinson with a big fight on the horizon. Exciting times for you to get back in the ring and a, a big occasion as well. Yeah, definitely. And I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not stupid in thinking that, you know. I'm I'm the favourite for this, and I know that Sky are using me as a stepping stone, but it's a big mistake. With Alan Babich, he's had a career where I think many people have expected to see him at a slightly lower weight. He's he's usually gone into the ring the smaller man. Are you seeing that as an advantage for you with your size and your arm reach and all that? Not at all. Um, listen, Alan Alan is a he's a he's a warrior. Uh, you know, he, he comes to he comes to the ring to hurt you, and you know he, he's he's all guns blazing. He's fit, um. So you know, fire's going to meet fire. We're, we're both not the most technical of boxers. I think we've both established that in in previous fights. We're not, you know, Nanua or Muhammad Ali's or Tyson Fury's or Usyk's, but you know, we're, we're two guys who are there to get the win and. I think we'll be meeting in the centre of the ring and I think we'll be swinging punches until one of our, one of our lands. And, you know, I, I can see it being stopped pretty early on. Fair to say it pretty much guarantees entertainment. Yeah. I mean, for yourself, we've we've seen your sort of style in the ring and it's probably not always um, gone your way as such. If you sort of thought about moving away from that? Is there things you've tried to develop? Listen, I got into boxing eight years ago off the back of a football injury. I I never, I never, ever, ever thought I'd be where I am now. You know, a leopard kind of changes his spots. I'm, I'm a kid who got into boxing because I was a hard kid from a council estate who didn't have any progression in football off the back of an injury. Football was my world. Football was my saviour. Football got us away from, you know, a lot of things, violence, and got us away from where I could have been. So when I didn't have football, the next alternative was, you know, being the person that I could have been or joining some sort of sport where I can, you know, give 110% of. I ended up fat. I ended up heavy. I ended up depressed, not realising, you know, with no GCSEs, thinking, where am I going to go? So I walked into a gym in, in, in 138 kilo and said, listen, I, I want to lose weight. What's the best exercise? Where I met Mark, where I met Giuseppe, where they said, come to the boxing classes. Um, you know, and, and it started off as boxer size with a bunch of 40-year-old overweight ladies. Um, and then it progressed in uh, the amateur boxing club, and from there, forty-four amateur fights in, six losses. Con- you know, represented my country, got into an ABA final, and from there it was sort of, let's go in there and just, this is my style, this is who I am, this is what I'm about. Fuck the haters, and. That's that's me, you know. I, I, I as I say, leopard won't change his spots, can't change his spots. I am the person I am, and I'll go in there and I'll give it a hundred and ten percent. And regardless whether I'm victorious or not, there'll be entertainment, and that's me. That must be when you step into a into a gym or or into a ring, and you remember where you've come from, it just must give you a huge sense of pride and motivation as well, I guess, just seeing where you've come from and where you are now in your career. It, it does, and, and, and it helps that my family and friends are so proud of of the person I've become. And I've got, I've got people who know me for Stephen Robinson, regardless whether I box, regardless whether or not I win, regardless whether or not I lose. They're there for us through thick, through thin, through bad, through good. And, you know, they're the people who keep me grounded and keep me motivated and keep me up there because without them, you know, I'd be nothing. 
I'd be nothing without the likes of Mark and, and, and my family and my friends. And, you know, I'm I'm not naive to to knowing that. And as I say, the, there's hate as always going to hate and, and hate as hate the best in the world. You know, look at, look at Ryan Garcia at the minute. Look at the hate he's getting. The kid's clearly not all there. The kid's clearly not, you know, he, he needs help. And then you see people with cameras in the face of, of Eubank, Chris Eubank Sr., when, you know, he's, he's off the rails and people are having cameras in his face and giggling and laughing. And everything on social media, is it's all for publicity. These people aren't happy with their lives. So they try and turn something in, uh, you know, by, by hating on others because they're not happy with their own self, you know, worth. So they put the they put their hate on the others and, and that's fine. It comes with part of the parcel, it comes with the sport. I get that. I get I'm gonna get hate. I get everyone's telling us that Babbage is gonna knock us out. I heard it all against Campbell. I heard it all against Ignatius. I'm yet to be knocked out, touch wood. So you know, this isn't new to me. This going into a fight as the underdog, going into the fight. You know, as the second favourite, isn't new to me. It doesn't affect us, doesn't bother us. You've not shied away from a challenge at all in your career. You mentioned a couple of the challenges you've taken on against Nick Campbell, against Ignatius as well. So early on your career and your development, they're not easy fights at all. And it's the same with Babbage. For you, what's the motivation to take these tough fights so early in your career? And the fact that I'm, you know, hitting 33 year old this year, I'm I'm not a kid. I got into boxing late on. I started boxing late on. You know, I haven't got tenure in the sport. But you look at the likes of Zhang and you look at the likes of Joe Parker and you look at the likes of Povetkin and Pulev and you see these people getting these mass- massive opportunities of 40 year old. So, you know, I've still got seven, eight years in the sport. I live the life. I don't drink. You know, I train every day. I'm in, I'm in good shape. I, I keep myself motivated. I haven't got the wear and tear on the body off thousands and thousands of rounds of sparring and hundreds of miles of running. And, you know, I, I touch wood, I, I don't, you know, pick up niggly little injuries and I'm not out of the sport for three months and six months and, other than other than you know the a broken rib or you know broken elbow which which is part of the parcel I, I haven't got wear and tear so I do believe I've 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 got seven eight years in the sport and the, the the quicker I can get up there I think Babich is ranked you know sixty sixth and 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 he's in the top he's in the top ten at bridge weight I'm six pound off bridge weight I'll make bridge weight like that already spoke to numerous um, nutritionists, Peter James Bell being one of them, that's going to work with us. God willing, I get past Babich. I want Rosanaki for that Bridge Away World title. Why not? Um, in Newcastle, as I say, I've spoke to nutritionists that will get, you know, me down to Bridge Away. A six foot seven, in shape Bridge Away. You know, there's, there's, there's no reason why that fight can't be made, but my focus is on Babich at first. Um, God willing, I get past Alan, and then from there on, bring bring that world title to the northeast. Why not? I know my colleague spoke to Nick Campbell earlier. He he fought not so long ago. He's now got Andy Lee on board, and he believes that he can beat you in a rematch and would be very interested in that. Is that something you'd be interested in? Listen, we're, we're, we're neither one of us are getting younger. Move on. I, I'm not sitting here calling Shane Gill out. I'm not sitting here calling, you know, Frank Ignatius out. You get beat. You move on. Like... Nick Campbell got beat. He needs to get that into the back of his head and move on. Like, I didn't even catch Campbell. Campbell give us everything he had. Right, first off, I've got 
I've, I haven't got an issue with Nick. I, I, you know, I spoke to him after the fight and I said, listen, good luck in your career. I've been where you have been and it, it's hard, you know. But I just think to myself, I think I, I, this isn't the first time I've heard this. Nick give us everything he had for three rounds. Never hurt us. Never had a stun. I caught him with a left hook that didn't even catch him. It swifted his jaw and put him on his horse. And he was he was still for three minutes, two minutes, 40 seconds, his legs were gone. I caught him with another little left hook, a chopping left hook, and put him on his horse. I hadn't even caught him with a big shot. So Nick can sit there and say, I want the rematch, I want this. Move on. Like, move I went, I went, who's, who's Nick fought after me? I went and fought a 7-0 and or 6-0 and Ignatius, who was the who was tipped to be the next big thing. And now I'm going to fight someone who's just fought for the world title. Why am I going to go back? Why am I going to take back steps? I'm, I'm moving on. You know, I got beat off Franklin Ignatius in, in a fight which, you know, was close. I got beat on points, and I accepted. I didn't sit there and go, "I want the rematch." He didn't, you know. I can believe I can do this. I believe I can do that. I accepted Franklin beaters, and now I'm moving on to Babich. And for me, if Nick Campbell wants to fight, wait. Tell him to sort it out. Tell him. Tell Andy Lee or whoever his management is to get in touch with my management. I've never backed down from a fight yet. But in my opinion, Nick needs to move on and take a big fight, get the win, and then progress in his career. And, 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 and if he's living, if I'm living in his head a year and a half later, rent free still, like that's 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 an un- unfortunate thing for Nick. And I don't want to say that. And I'd I'd like to I'd like to say if that's happening and and listen, I think Nick needs to just move on from that loss and, and move on to bigger, better things. And he was meant to be fighting um, oh, the guy who Ignatius beat, what's he called? Um, who was in the GB squad, the big guy, the big kid um, from down down the Midlands. What is there still? Jose Stewart. That was all. That was all signed. So what? What happened there? Does anyone know? Uh, he, he was. He was meant to be fighting Lamar Griggs. What happened there? So I've had three or four people messages and say oh, I'm fighting Nick Campbell, and none of them come off. Why? Michael Webster was meant to be fighting Nick Campbell, never come off. So why aren't these fights happening? Why? 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 You know why am I still? Why am I still in his mouth a year and a half later? It's, it's fucking sad to be honest. But like I say, if, if that's if that's a fight he wants, then I couldn't give a shit. Like I've never backed down from a fight yet, and I'll, I, you know, I'll never back down from a fight. So okay, great. And if we can't make that fight, I'll go down and I'll spar with him. And you know, it's it's just it's just unnecessary for 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 to be still mentioned. I think it's quite sad that my name's still in his mouth a year and a half later. If I'm totally honest, but well, whatever. If that's what he wants, that's what he wants. I know the sparring against some of the the top heavyweights in the world has been a big part of your development. Whether that be Usyk more recently, or I know you've been in with Martin Bacoli as well. How much confidence does that give you and just generally your progression in the ring to show that you can compete against these top guys? None. Just sparring, sparring. It's 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 like a pre-season friendly. You know, you you, you see Blythe Spartans going and beating Man City 2-1 and Gateshead beating Newcastle and it's, it's irrelevant. You know, does that mean Gateshead could come into the Premiership and get into Europe? Absolutely not. Sparring isn't. I'll, I'll I'll never sit there and go. I have sparred Joshua. I've sparred Usyk. I've sparred Bacoli. I've sparred Fury. I've sparred... all of that's irrelevant to 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 me. Sparring's learning. Um, you're not in there 
you know, you're in there to 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 practice <laughs> what's been happening, and you're only in there for for two three rounds with these world champions. So, you know, you're not really, you know, these have got five six spawn. But exactly what I'm doing at the minute, I'm paying for spawn partners. I've got four spawn partners fresh coming in the ring. Two rounds, two rounds, two rounds, two rounds, and then they they spar after that. But when you're in a camp, you you you're not really exp because you're putting a pace on that person that you wouldn't ever be able to do because you know you're only doing two rounds or you know you're only doing three rounds. So the pace you put on and and the things you're doing are things you would never do if you're training for ten rounds. Like I've never sparred the pace that I put on Usyk for this camp because I'm training for 10 rounds. So with fresh people and the same as the same as with everyone, you know, it, it, it doesn't, I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, I've, I've sparred this person. I, I'm, I'm up there and that person's down there because I think, I think sparring's irrelevant to your, to your, to your progression. To be honest, I think, I think sparring weekly with, People, you know, fresh people and, and new people and whether the, you know, amateurs or whether the, the pedigree is there, they were world champion or whether, the, you know, they're a, they're a novice amateur. You, you, you're constantly learning that everyone is different. Um, the sparring is, is just, it's just a pre-season friendly in football terms. It's a, it's a training. It's a, you know, you're putting in a practice what you've what you've been learning and you, you're attempting there and things and you're moving and you're trying things that you've you've been practicing for two or three weeks on the pads leading up to the sparring. So yeah, I, I never look at sparring as as a as me being one above anybody else or give me the higher arc that I've sparred this person and they've only sparred that person. I, I don't think there's any any relevance in in that to be honest. With Martin, him and him, him and his team often call for him to be thrust right into that world championship scene. From what you've seen of him, do you believe he has that ability to win a world title? Martin Bacoli is absolutely phenomenal. He's a very he sits there and says he's knocked everyone out. I can safely say he's never knocked me out, but he is very good. I I can say I, I could say why if he has if 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 it's true what him and Billy say I, I can say why um it's true anybody who sits there and says that Martin won't isn't good or you know hasn't done this or hasn't done that I think they might be telling a few points because I, I, I Martin Bacoli is very very durable very fit. Powerful, fast. Um, I've uh, yeah, I rate them highly. In the people I've sparred, I rate Martin very highly. Um, I think his coach is a whopper. <laughs> I think Billy's a bit of a knob. Um, he said things about me for some reason. I, I don't know why. Off the back of the Nick Campbell thing, but you know, it, which. It, is daft, but yeah, I, I do rate Martin. I rate him a lot. Um, and I, I would like to see a big fight for Martin. Um, in the near future, him and Park, I would be a fantastic one off the back of his Zhang fight. Um, him and you know, him and Dubois, it would be another great fight. There's 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 a lot of people out there that that I'd like to see a rematch with Hunter, which has been spoke about numerous times. And why isn't that happening? Um, Hunter wants it, so what? Well, I don't understand why that isn't happening and why Sky's not organising that because Sky was in talks with Hunter already for Huey Fury, and obviously, unfortunately, Huey isn't well, and you know, speedy recovery to him, God willing, that he comes back soon, and yeah, so so it's it's quite apparent that they've they've already been in talks with whoever. You know his management is so why aren't why isn't that getting organised? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. You know he's sitting and and wanting this and wanting that and wanting world title shots, but I do believe he he, he is up there with 
with uh, with them. Uh, he's he's very good, very very good. You've mentioned a couple of times about being in the most recent Usyk camp. We obviously had the breaking news a couple of a few weeks back now with the eye injury suffered to Tyson Fury. Were you there with Usyk when he received that news? I was, I was sparring him. If if you look at the if you look at the picture that went viral, well, the, the when it is the the team Usyk found out it's me and him sparring. Um. So yeah, we we jumped out the ring, um, and we he got he got pulled to one side and told, and he wasn't bothered one little bit. He finished his session, and he said, "If that's God's plan, that's God's plan." Um, carried on training, finished his session, and it was so blase about the actual news and, and he's so professional and just carried on mindset focused and within and this happened on the Friday um, and you know uh, within four hours he was fighting Hergovic and we were being kept out and then within six hours we were heading home and the fight was cancelled and within ten hours the fight was rescheduled it was it was crazy with with the, these these Saudis, they don't they don't mess about the you know boom boom boom. It's it, you know it's, it's phenomenal what what they're doing with boxing and and with other sports. And I've just been seeing the something this morning about the snooker on the one six seven, and it's up for a million quid, like you know a million pound for a snooker player. It's just it's it's life changing money and. You know they they they're doing well for all sports and they're doing it with golf. They're doing it with Formula One and they're doing it with the football league. So listen, fair play to them. Um, you know they want the big fights, they want the big shows, they want that, and you know they make things work, they make things happen, and it, it's good that boxing's back on the rise because of that, and it, it's it's good to see. Would you have a hundred percent confidence that Fury? Uh, um, that Usyk, yeah, Usyk and Fury goes ahead on that rescheduled date because we've seen the depth of that cut and it's it's quite a nasty one. Will he be able to get in sufficient sparring? Will he be fully prepared for that date? Do you feel? I don't think I don't think you would have accepted the fight with a ten million um, clause mm -hmm. in it. You know. Who's got ten million pound to throw about and piss about with over over? If if you're not a hundred percent sure, and you you know they give you a date and you're not a hundred percent sure, and then they're throwing figures like ten million pound about and you still accept it, you'd be very stupid to to not be a hundred percent confident with um with that and. We've seen him badly cut against Otto Wallen. He, he's, 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 you know, he, he may be like Wolverine. He may be a really quick healer, and you know, with the right doctors and the right people around him, there's, there's, well, you know, he obviously believes that that's ready, and you know, he's he's back in training, and I, you know, it's obviously I was over in the Usa camp, but. Listen, I absolutely love Tyson Fury. I love what he's done for the sport. I love the way he's bounced back from mental health and you know the 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 fact he's just a people's man and you you see him on social media talking to fans and I, you know of course I want to see Tyson Fury do well and I, I you know I really want to see that fight and being part of it was was a privilege. So you know once we get out the way, Alan. Out the way, we'll probably be back over. Um, we've already had the call to go back, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see what what happens after after this fight. Final thing, a couple of things I'd like to speak to you about is the main event. Obviously, you're on the undercard of Fabio Wardley and Fraser Clark. How do you feel that main event goes? It's a it's a funny one because it's it's one of them where you know you've got this polished Olympian who who is a, a fantastic boxer in and out of range and finds his range, picks his shots well, and 
you know, and then you've got this kid who's come from the unlicensed, who's raw, who's savage, who's heavy handed, who's fit, who's durable. So you've got, you know, you've you've got these two people who are very different in the in the box and accolades, and it's it's one of them where you know I think a lot of people are sitting on the fence of it could go either way. Could can Fraser box his head off for is the British ten or twelve? Twelve. I think it's twelve. Yeah, I think it's just twelve. I think yeah, and English is ten. So. Can Fraser sit and pick him off for 12 rounds and keep him out of range and, and box him for 12 rounds? It's 36 minutes is a long time to, to keep someone at bay and you know keep them keep keep that when you when when you've only ever had to do that for three rounds. You know, the the kid's an Olympian, he's 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 clearly uh, a polished, polished, polished boxer. Um, you don't you don't make the Olympics and get a get a bronze medal for for nothing and and then you've got a man who's coming out who who probably never expected to be a British champion probably never expected to be where he is who wants to keep them belts and who's you know got fire in the heart and who wants to wants to be a world you know world champion competitor and be up there and you know, the, the, there's no you know, he, he's going there with probably thinking there's no stone getting left unturned. I'm in this to to be the champion and I'm keeping them belts. So you've got a kid who, you know, who who believe who everyone believes is, you know, gonna box his head off and, and it, it, that that's pressure because the both, you know, it's it's pressure on Fraser that He's been to the Olympics and you've got this kid in front of you who 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 who's come from unlicensed. And if Fraser gets beat, all the all the idiots on social media will be sitting, he's finished, he's done, he's fin Listen, the kid's been in the Olympics. How many there's thousands and millions of professional boxers been through the professional ranks, but there's probably only one percent, not even one percent, got an Olympic medal. So regardless of what happens in Fraser's career, he can hold his head high and say, I'm an Olympian and I'm medaled Olympian as well. You know, and uh, that's that's proud, a proud, proud, proud thing to have on the on the back of you, you know. Um, but it's it it is one of them where it could go either way. I'm 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 on total um, one day, you know, uh, Fabio's, you know, is he too raw for him? Is he too powerful? But Fraser's tidy and he gets the sparring partners in and he's got the he's got the money to be able to pay for the sparring partners and be able to pay for the right people and do proper camps and have the right people around him and have the good equipment and it, it, it really could go either way and I'm I'm looking forward to it. Final thing for you tomorrow, we see the return of Anthony Joshua against Francis Ngannou. I guess a year ago, we couldn't have imagined Francis Ngannou would be the man in the opposite corner of, of Anthony Joshua. What a, a story he sort of made for himself. And I guess off the back of the performance against Tyson Fury, he's fresh in people's mind. And people, there are people out there that believe that he can cause AJ some serious problems on Friday night. He, he he deserves it though. Like he's you know, people sit there and they talk about misfits and they talk about you know it's a it's disgusting for boxing and Jake Paul and Logan Paul and this and that and to that and these people have no clue what it's like to be in a camp to spy four times a week to diet. It's the most one of the most disciplined sports in the world. So I don't care what level you're at. I don't care whether you're doing misfits. I don't care whether you're doing, you know, the Olympics, a professional, an amateur, male or female. It's a disciplined, horrible, hard sport. It's a lonely sport to be involved with. So when people sit there and talk about these Jake Pauls and Logan Pauls and how they don't deserve this and how they don't deserve that and how Engano doesn't deserve this and how why? Well, the, the, they're going through the exact same discipline as anybody else. Yes, you know, they've, 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 they've walked into these fights off the back of 
but they've walked into these fights off the back. He's walked into this fight off the back of being a UFC world champion, off the back of you know leaving his Cameroon on a bus, going to France, being homeless. It's it you know there'll, there'll be a film about this story one day, exactly the same as when Leicester won the Premiership, and you know all these things. These the, everyone's saying it'll be the biggest upset in sport if 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 Joshua gets beat. Why? What? Well, why? Why is everybody discrediting the UFC world champion? If if Joshua gets beat, does that make him in an another Olympian, another another gold medalist? Does that make him any worse off because he's just being beat of somebody who's never boxed before? Yes, he has boxed. He boxed amateur. He's fought his whole, you know, he's, he's, he's clearly a tough bloke. He's been in the fighting game for however long. The same as with Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor had boxed way before he started MMA. You know, and... Then he got into MMA, but he still carried on that boxing. He still knew how to box. You, you look at the way Ngannou switched and was was hiding his jab out. He, the, the kid knows how to fight. The kid's got the discipline. So, it, it, like, I, I think Anthony will get the win. I do think Anthony's going to be too too powerful and he's, he's going to be too good for him. But if he doesn't, is it the end of Anthony Joshua? Absolutely not. Is it the end of John A. Wilder because Park had beat him? Absolutely not. But people sit there on social media and are quick to jump on and say, that's unfinished, he's shit, he's this, he's that. The same people haven't got a clue what it's like to actually be in a camp, to actually finish a camp, you know, to be dieting, to be sparring, to, to be on your own 24-7. And... But these people who sit there and, and comment don't realise what it's like. So, God willing, Joshua does get the win tomorrow. What what happens next? I, I don't know. And what happens for Ngarno next? Again, I don't know. But I do think Joshua will, will, will stop him. Um, I think he'll be too too powerful for him. Um, uh, I, I do. I can say it. An early, you know, stoppage in the fifth or the sixth. But again, he has to be wary of Engano's power. It's quite apparent Engano was fit. He hits hard, comes to the body well. So he is going to have to be wary of that. And, you know, I'm sure he will be. I'm sure he's trained and, and, and knows all of... You know, ben Davison is a is a absolute analytics when it comes to boxing. So I'm sure that Ben's got him in the best shape and in the best sort of, you know, defensive mechanisms that he that he needs to be in for this fight. And I'm sure Anthony will come out on top. No, Stephen, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Great insight on on some of the things in boxing there. Really appreciate it. And uh, best of luck when the 31st rolls around. No, I appreciate it, Josh. Thank you very much. And thank you for having us on and taking your time. I appreciate it. Thank you.